Good evening and a warm welcome to the State of Business. I'm Nishani Figuera. Let's first take a look at tonight's headlines. Kalama Stock Exchange to introduce a new tools to enhance confidence. And SOS Children's Village seeks support to meet funding gaps. The chief executive of the Colombo Stock Exchange, Rajiv Bandar Nayaka, says a number of new initiatives will be introduced to improve confidence of the CSC. One of them will be the introduction of delivery versus payment mechanism. Uh, right now uh, in the market there is an anomaly where when you buy shares, the shares move instantly to the buyer's account and the seller loses custody of the shares without any payment. So as a buyer you get the shares instantly but as a seller you lose custody without payment. So there's a bit of a three-day risk that the seller would run, which is really not covered. And investors, particularly foreign and institutional investors, are uncomfortable about it. Globally accepted standard is something called delivery versus payment, where you exchange shares for money at the same time. So shares move and the money moves at the same time and, and it's settled. So that's called a delivery versus payment system. We are hoping to move into that. He disclosed that the first phase of the DVP is already done through updating the broker systems to make them DVP compliant. The remaining work will be completed this year and Bandaranayaka said it will be a big achievement for the Colombo Stock Exchange in terms of confidence building. It's a sort of a big jump for our market and um, a big change as well, but uh, which will uh, improve the risk profile in the market certainly. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we are also trying to introduce a new alternate market segments. For example, to create a SME board for small and medium enterprises to also reach the capital market and access funding. Secondly, we also have plans of introducing a dollar denominated board, US dollar securities to be issued uh, of foreign companies and already a few foreign companies have expressed an interest. So we are planning to at least get one dual listed, one foreign company, uh, initial listing in the primary market and a dual listing here within the first six months of the year. The Condominium Management Authority plans to obtain the services of the University of Moratua to conduct a research on construction standards of condominium development in Sri Lanka. A memorandum of understanding was signed between the CMA and the Department of Architecture of University of Moratua in this regard. The main aim of the research is to bring in proper regulations and policies in order to regularize the condominium construction sector. The researchers will also investigate the social, economic and environmental impact of high-rise living to ensure the well-being of the occupants. At present, the Condominium Management Authority regulates the ownership and management of the condominiums. However, it does not have any authority to regulate planning and building of those residential units. The exercise today that we have with the university, we have got together and signed this memorandum of article is purely to ensure that the condominium development in the future will be regularized, will be put into correct form and you know we find it fairly difficult in finding ways and means because we come across various issues daily. Uh, so if we can find out the uh, real solutions to the problems we have, we can do the necessary amendments to the law, have regulations and also ensure that uh, peaceful life is provided to the condominium occupiers. We know that in Sri Lanka, uh, because of our lots of uh, space limitations, when we talked about the mega cities, having uh, very high-rise buildings, uh, we have lots of issues coming up with the condominium. And um, it is very important that we provide these uh, regulations, laws, the policies and things like that, which are subjects in many developed countries. And Sri Lanka, uh, at the verge of uh, moving into this area, we have identified the need to support and develop these policy guidelines to make sure that um, we provide them a better quality of life and safe life and it is our paramount duty being professionals to support these uh, efforts of the government uh, to provide this service and that is what we are going to do. The State of Business will return with more news after this short break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching The State of Business. 
The international president of SOS Children's Villages, Siddhartha Kaul, says they seek assistance from Sri Lankan corporates and philanthropists to raise funds to maintain their SOS Children's Villages in Sri Lanka. The SOS concept was introduced to Sri Lanka in 1981 and at present they have six villages looking after almost a thousand children who are without parents. When we started in Sri Lanka, we didn't raise any money in Sri Lanka. For 35 years, we have been supporting. We are a global federation of 134 countries and we support each other. So member countries based in Europe, especially Germany, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, have been supporting the work in uh, Sri Lanka. So they were providing us the necessary money for doing this work. But in the last couple of years, we have started to raise money in Sri Lanka because uh, Sri Lanka is progressing quite well. The civil conflict is more or less over. There's a lot of economic development. So people in Europe, where we raise our money, they ask, why don't people in Sri Lanka look after their own children? Why doesn't the government look after its own children? We have supported so long. So we have put a, a system in place to raise money. Uh, we do a lot of uh, awareness, a lot of uh, different techniques to find money. Not very successful, but uh, a good beginning, a good beginning. And not so much coming. The government is not, uh, children who have lost their families is not a top priority for the government as, at this point of time where financial support is concerned. The global president of SOS Villagers said since Sri Lanka is one of the top-ranked countries in the Global Giving Index, they expect more support from the Sri Lankan people to continue their services in Sri Lanka. What we have to understand, people in Sri Lanka and various other uh, South Asian countries or Southeast Asian countries are very fond of giving. But I have a personal theory about it. They are very fond of giving for religious causes. We are all trying to fix our next life, you know. So we have to bring a little bit of a shift there. It's very important to do that because that's a very firm belief. But it is also very important that uh, children who have been left out because of whatever reason must receive sufficient support. We talk a lot about children's rights. Sri Lanka was one of the first countries to sign on the Charter of Children's Rights. We talk a lot about these things, but these have to be translated into actions. And there it's not happening as much as it should. You all know how expensive Sri Lanka is now. So the government, even in its own facilities, is not providing sufficient financial support and other support. So this has to increase tremendously. We are trying to create awareness. We are talking to our like-minded organizations. There are many other organizations in Sri Lanka who do work with children. So we are joining hands with them to approach the government and to approach public at large board. He especially invited big corporates in the country to help them with funds to provide guardianship to Sri Lankan children who deserve a better future. I have a very simple message. Every society is known by how it takes care of the weakest people. Now, we have children in this country who have no one or who have been failed by their uh, parents. I was looking at our village in Biliandila. We have 160 children. Last year, we received 41 children from the Department of Probation. And these are 41 children whose parents have failed them. The children have been taken away by the authorities because the parents are not competent to look after the children. Now somebody has to look after them. You can't just leave them on the street. And somebody has to give them sufficient amount of physical uh, security, emotional security, opportunity for education. So all this costs money. And it is the government and the society both who are responsible. So we are approaching everyone. And I tell people, I tell you, you know, you, you got to do what you little bit you can do. So how long people from outside the country can support this? Up to a point, yes. So we are trying very hard. We have put a plan in place. I'm hoping that my Sri Lankan colleagues will succeed and in the next four or five years be not dependent on money from outside Sri Lanka. We would be able to find sufficient money in Sri Lanka to take care of the children. Yes, this is what I would like to achieve. It's not easy, but I think Sri Lanka can do it. Let's take a look at more developments after this short break. Welcome back to the show. In more stories tonight, 
Financial Intelligence Unit of Sri Lanka signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Department for Le Registration of Persons in terms of the provisions of the Financial Transactions Reporting Act No. 6 of 2006. This will allow to obtain information in order to facilitate investigations and prosecutions on money laundering and terrorist financing. P. Vyani Gulatilaka, Commissioner General, Department for Registration of Persons, and H. Amaruthunga, Director, FIU, signed the MOU on behalf of the respective institutions. The Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, who is also the Chairman of the Anti Money Laundering and Countering the Financing of Terrorism National Coordinating Committee, was also present. Money laundering and terrorist financing are internationally connected financial crimes which could threaten the stability of the global economic and financial system. The MOU would enable sharing information for the identification of persons suspected of being involved in money laundering and terrorist financing, which is vital for intelligence purposes. And that wraps up the show for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Thank you for watching. Good night.